Welcome to the DJ Diaries, a podcast by Lara Fraser and myself, Lara Pradelska, where we talk to DJs and we invite our favorite people and we talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the nasty, the naughty, the funny, the sexy. And we've got a very special guest today in the studio. Yes, we do. We have household name, Melvin O'Doom. Thank you so much for coming on, Melvin. Um, For those of you listening that don't know who he is, Melvin is best known for being a radio DJ on BBC Radio One alongside fellow broadcaster Ricky Haywood and Charles Hedges. But he also DJs in the traditional sense and he's a bit of a TV personality as well. So we have a triple threat in the building, Melvin. <laughs> we're so happy you're yeah. here. Thanks we're for so... having me. That was a wonderful uh, big up, by the way. Uh, it's a big up. Yeah, we're no. super excited to have you on the show because we know we're, you're so busy and it actually means a lot. And we're going to literally just throw you straight in. Mm-hmm. I'm here for it. Uh, right. Yeah. We've got the get to know you quick fire. Here we so go. this is how we're going to get in deep with Melvin. And How deep f- we going? We're going deep because Clem the deep first deep. one. Okay. And I did tell you last night I was binging your podcast, and you have a podcast out called Melvin Meets His Match. Yep. Now it's all about your dating life, so I need to know what is overall the worst date you've ever been on. Okay. Um. So it was a few years ago, and it was with someone that I'd known for a while, and I kind of plucks up the courage to ask her out. And I said, let's go for lunch. And do you know that place, Vapiano? Yeah. yeah. Where you kind of queue up for your food. You don't have to do it anymore. It's but you used to queue up back in the day. Anyway, she pulled up and um, got out of the car. And then in the back, there was a baby that I didn't know about. She would never told me she had a kid. And I love kids. I've got kids in my family. But I didn't know about this child who she'd brought on a date. A first date, by the way, right? So we've come out um, of the car. She sat down. And with Vapiano, there's two queues. There's a queue for pasta. There's a queue for pizza. So she went and had pizza. I had my pasta. I came and sat down. She'd finished her meal. So basically, her and her son watched me eat my food. And it was the most awkward date I've ever been on in my life. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I don't know what it, what would you do? I leave. I'm sorry. No, I, you, you know, I don't I know. I, I don't I, know. Even no, if I'm on a bad day, I never leave. Yeah. You don't leave. Never. And okay. I always pay. Well, this brings me to my next question. Worst gig you ever played. Worst gig? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Sorry to anyone who's from Preston. But there was a nightclub that we went to a few years ago and I was doing a gig with, do you know Lauren Pope? Yes. From Taui. And She's we were gorge. doing this tour, a beautiful girl, yeah. great DJ, we love her loads. And we were doing this tour and all the other dates were really, really good. But this particular date in Preston, we literally got to the club and there was more staff in there than people. Easily, there was about three people on the dance floor. That was it. But with me and like Lauren, we just kind of got on with it, played the music, enjoyed. And about our crew that were with us, they were really cool and like chilled and relaxed. So we had a good time. All right. Well, you've got to make the best of it. And I think there's no bad party if you make it into a good party. Plus Absolutely. we got paid, so it's fine. Yeah, and that makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to get a bit more into DJing stuff now. And I want to know what DJ you would most like to go back to back with. <laughs> You see, that's a tough question Mm. because essentially I would say someone really, really good, but then they'd show you up. Yeah. So I'd need someone who I'd think is was good but on par. So I'm gonna go for Manny Norte. Nice. Yeah. DJ Manny Norte. He's a very good friend of ours. Nice. I think he is he just has an amazing energy about him. In terms of his music, um, in terms of his music knowledge, he's kind of across the board. And I think if wherever he is in the world, he can play for that audience. So awesome. I'd say, I think in terms of energy, I'm technically, I'm nowhere as good as Manny. But in terms of energy, I think we're similar. I think good you're answer. being very kind because I think you're actually a fire DJ. If I'm we're, uh, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. We're good. I've got to build yeah. myself up. But yeah, yeah look, Manny, I've, I used to work on his show yeah. when we was at One Extra. But he is like... If I have a birthday or like a big party, he's the DJ I want there. Okay. Awesome. Um, Raver day parties. Ooh. <laughs> See, the thing is, I'm getting more and more lazy these days. So I do love a day party. Do you think it's age? Yeah, I think I'm just getting old, you know. 
I'll vote no. I've always liked a day party, though. I think it's an, it's an Australia and sun, sun thing. We've always liked to do the party in the daytime. I'm a total... So you prefer day? You both yeah. prefer day? No, 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 I don't. I'm a total German rave girl, like Berlin rave. Like, I'm I'm, I'm, a, I'm a house girl, so, oh, you know. Give me a yacht right, so party any day. Yeah. Yeah. Daytime, yacht party. Like, I've never been on a yacht party. Lara's like, yeah, give me a yacht party. We, yeah. Some of us, we've never, I've never been on a yacht party. But before. I, do you know what? You live in London, okay? Of course, I, I, You've got to allow me. I, I live. You in a... live in London as well now. I know. Exactly. You should. Too, you should get like a boat on the Thames, you too, and have your like Can we your do own that? little party. Yeah. Right. Just play oh, music out of speaker. Deal. Deal. Right, deal. Cool. Hip hop or house? <sighs> Hip hop all day. Yeah. All day long. That's what I was raised on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean Tribe Called Quest, Slum Village, yeah. De La Soul? That that was me growing up. Nas, Jay Z, Notorious B.I.G., Tupac. I'm a hip hop head. And Love today, that. Coolio, we got to give a shout out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sad, sad yeah. day. Yeah. Um, innovator, definitely. Was so, it a big song for you, actually? Do you know what? Paradise, I so. think it's what he did in the scene. Like to get that tune was like number one for time. And in terms of what he did in the industry and how I, I loved Coolio as, as an entity, I thought he was a very cool character. So when I woke up this morning and heard the news, it was really, really sad. Sad day for everybody. Um, pet peeve while you're DJing. I know you guys know this one. So I hate, and I, I shouldn't say this, but I hate when people ask me for requests. Yeah. Like, and, and the thing is, I, I, I play for the people. But if you've hired a DJ, if you've come to see a DJ, why are you asking for tunes? If you want to hear a specific tune, go to your Spotify at home and listen there. Don't ask me for tunes. And I don't mind if you ask for like, because everyone has that one tune that they're feeling. If you come for one tune, you say, I want to hear a Beyonce tune. Fair enough. But there's, the, there's the, always that one person who will continually come for the whole night and they want their whole playlist. Please go away. On Leave the me back alone. of that, I just wanted to ask, have you ever had someone be really, really rude with their request? Yeah, to be honest with you, because I've, I've had rude people, my, I don't know, I want to know what you guys do. Oh, we'll let you know. But for me, I just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I that's go, good. Because the thing is, my friend's got this saying, with yes, there's no why. Right. So if you just say yes to everything, no one, they're not going to ask you any more questions. So when someone says, oh, Melvin, can you play this tune from um, Jay-Z? I just go, oh, yeah, 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 it's coming next. And I just don't play it. And then if they, if it's the end of my set and they're like, Melvin, why don't you play it? Oh, the next DJ's got it for you. I always just say, I'm playing it for you. I'm yeah. stealing that. But I'm you know what? That. I always say, I'll try my best. No, like, no, no one wants to hear that. No. Think about, think about a <laughs> Don't drunk. Don't try your best. Yeah, yeah, never try your, they want to hear their truth. Especially if it's a drunk audience. I know. So I just go, oh yeah, 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 it's coming soon. And then Love. I never play it. Do you remember it. when the girl fell off the stage at so her, her farmhouse? We had we, so, we were, we, we, yeah. so we were playing a gig at Sarah Farmhouse um, for Halloween, and it was actually one of our biggest gigs. And it was the, so much fun, it and super... it, they turned that farmhouse bit into a, like a rave. Yeah, like, I was like, and there was one drunk girl. I'm not sure she was drunk, but there was definitely substances <laughs> involved. <laughs> but I don't she know, was... people were taking pills. It was crazy. Dang. But she walks onto the stage and she kept asking for vanilla ice, <laughs> and we were like, "Girl, like, no, no one wants to hear vanilla ice." We're in the middle of like, go away. <laughs> anyway, instead. Of turning around on the third time to walk off the thing, yeah. she walked straight off the stage, and fell, fell on her face. Her dress went over her head, wow. like it was. It was, yeah. and Lau turned to me and she's like, "Lara, stop laughing because I am creasing." And she's like, <laughs> "But, but we should have said in hindsight, it's yes. Yeah, we yeah, will yeah. play vanilla. Always, so. I will always say yes. And sometimes, if someone selects a tune that I do think will fit in the party, I will play it." To get the guys with the phones going, hey, get, hey. I had I went yeah. to a gig in where were we Bournemouth the other day, yeah. and yeah, there was like a balcony area, yeah. and I was getting phones from like miles away. And if I have it, I will play it. But if I do not have that tune, or I think it will not go down in this mm. party or rave or dance or whatever, I say yeah, cool, but never play it. So I've got to ask before I was a taken woman. Um, I used to hang out with a lot of DJs. I was that girl in the club in Germany <laughs> hanging out with the DJs. <laughs> that's okay, um, and that's how I actually I, I think first fell in love with DJing amongst many oh, other real? things. Really, yeah, I, I was hanging out with DJs and I, I had many DJ boyfriends. Not that many, but a few. And um, mm -hmm. are you cool with girls <laughs> hanging out? Are you cool with girl, girls hanging out in the DJ booth? Um, I don't mind it as long as you're not a distraction. Right. Like, like if you're not cute. 
It's more if you disrespect what's going on. I remember there was, I remember I was dating this um, incredible girl, but she'd get really tipsy and spill drink over the decks. Don't do that. I'm Are you sorry. that person? <laughs> Lara's that person. Isn't I, I'm, not, what, I'm the one DJing. I'm not spilling the drinks. Have you done that before? Yeah, I have totally done that okay, before. There you go. My thing is, as long as you respect the DJ, yeah. like you're not bumping the decks, you're not spilling drinks, you're not coming and asking me tunes midway right. through and that distracting don't attack me. me. <laughs> but if I don't mind people, I like, quite like an energy. I, I like it when my cousin used to come out with us a lot. My cousin Will, big up Will. And he would be in the booth and he will chill. My friend Eddie's would come, Josiah. I like a good energy. As long as you're not disrespectful, like, disrespecting the mixing and mm, the, yeah. like what we're trying to do, then it's all good. Because it's a skill and people forget that it actually takes a lot of brain power in order to mix well and understand crowd. You're doing a lot of different things at once. So a lot of distraction is never going to be a good it's thing. It's like surgery, isn't it? It is. I'm it's <laughs> we it's are, exactly the we same. We are saving the world <laughs> through <laughs> music. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Now, do you have a rider? And if if you have a rider, what's the naughtiest and, thing and, on the rider? And how bougie do you go? Yeah, I want to know do more you... about your riders. Oh, we're so simple, babe. Yeah. Really? We're so simple. We're, we're like, like green tomato. Simple life. <laughs> <laughs> we're the simple life. I bet I know what yours is. Yours is just go like on. water. Water. Oh, I bet you're just you, really pure. You really can't read um, people, can you? <laughs> so I'm going to say one thing, and because it's our show, and I get to say this, Lara and I DJed um, actually on a on a boat um, for the Mon for the Monaco Grand Prix, oh, and, um, I, and I had you had so much tequila, tequila. That, and then I went to the guy and I said to him, I said, "Listen, um, before we start a new set, do you have any tequila?" He goes, "No, because you drank it all of yesterday." What? So is tequila, so, what you have, you guys have? I, should, I do. No, I'm a gin and tonic, and yeah. um, she's champagne. the classy one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not oh, really. gin and tonic and champagne. <laughs> well, you know, you start with like a glass of Here Prosecco yeah. because it's like bubbly and it's like, ooh, that's nice. And then, but you can't have too much of it because like it makes it a bit sugary and stuff. So then you move into the gin. And what, is it a specific gin? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a very simple girl. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> and Laura? No, any tequila goes. Uh, any tequila? Yeah. No, uh, yeah. Not any I'm new to the. I'm new no. to the Have tequila. Have you seen party. the one with, with the uh, blue and white bottle? It's really long. And yes, no. it's an 18, um, whatever it is. It's, and Lau just lied through her teeth because she's so specific with her tequila. Really? That's what I'm saying. But like, I, I, I can't even believe she's holding a straight face saying. Tell this. me the truth. You don't need to lie to me. <laughs> like, okay. She's and like no. either Don Julio or this or that. Or I mean, if I'm asked. If I, okay, if, if what's the cheapest a... you go? Like, do you go lower than Patron? Yeah. Okay. I do. I go low. Yeah. Re would you go to like Sainsbury's own brand? No. I, I've not. I'm. I'm sure there have been many events where I've downed a tequila that was Sainsbury. So next so... party I see you at, and I bring you a cheap bottle. You. Okay. Cool. I got you. I mean, you don't have to bring me the bottle. Do you know what? Just... She, she's going to re-gift you a bottle. Yeah, yeah, like... yeah, yeah <laughs> It's good, but do you know what? You... I feel like we should be asking you. So for me, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a spiced rum guy. Oh. So I'll have a spiced rum with ginger beer and fresh lime. That's if right. I can choose. That sounds like a very chill drink. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like a, it's like a poor man's dark and stormy. Oh, perfect. If you've had that. I've so. not. What's a dark and stormy? <laughs> it's, it's, it is a similar cocktail, but I think they put bitters in it and, and other so things. So do you, do you have that actually on your... I actually don't have to kill on my rider. I'm just more like, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, have two I, shots to kill home. If it's me and Rick's, I do ask for a spiced rum. Generally, mm. and okay. if, but Ricky prefers like vodka. He likes like spirits. He's a bit like you, mm. so he'll yeah. have like a gin or he'll have like a vodka. But I don't. Are you saying we're hardcore and, and yeah? And they're so, not so, so, so this is kind of what brings okay. me to the next question because yeah. you and Ricky, you, yeah. you you you're you're Lara and I, except much more famous and much bigger. <laughs> no, but, we're not as good looking as you two. But, but, hey, Joe, what can you do? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you work with what, what you've got. But we're <laughs> aspiring to be like you. And um, what's the secret to you guys' success? It's it's you know uh, you work together. You 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 grind together. You've been together for a long time. It's working really well. And your friends outside of work. Exactly. Yeah. We're family. Yeah. Ricky's like so. my brother. Um, it's a combination of different things. Like we study together at uni. And um, for me and Rick's, it's, I trust him. Like I trust him wholeheartedly. And we kind of motivate each other. And we had similar goals when we were at uni. I didn't really know where I wanted to, to be in the industry. I, I really liked the idea of acting. Then I went into like presenting then I'll kind of fell into radio because we did like shows at university and stuff like that and I just think it for for us I think the reason why people like us is because of our dynamic 
they like hearing two guys who are like close, close mates, and Charlie as well on our show on Radio One, they like that dynamic. Same with you two. I think people go, they love how you guys bounce off each other and how you spin and and you always look so glamorous on the red carpet and stuff so people buy into your dynamic because there's so many great female DJs and there's so many great like people who are in front of the camera in front of the microphone but I think people enjoy you two because of your dynamic and because of you're so close oh, that's and that's so why kind. They, I'm like, but that's thank but it's true that's oh, why people thank you because that's what you. you want you you want you want to enjoy what you reflect or what you aspire to, to be or what you aspire to be like. And I think that's what people buy into with us. I wanted to ask you, um, just to get to the beginning of everything, how did you even get on the path to DJing? I know you said you had many interests. Do you know the start. truth? Do you yeah. want to know the truth? Yeah, I do. So when we started on The Breakfast Show at Kiss, mm. we started getting gigs and um, we couldn't DJ. Oh my God, we, they are us. <laughs> Just what I'm saying. <laughs> so me and Ricks were always on the mic. We I live with a guy called Charles Juve, who we used to work for Sony Street Team. Sick DJ. My friend Josiah, sick DJ. My friend Yanni. All, we, all of our mates were DJs. We were the guys on the microphone. We weren't really interested in, like, kind of scratching and stuff like we couldn't get our head around it in the same way and we were i was always the guy and ricky was a, like a wicked garage mc and i was always like like the guy freestyling to hip-hop beats and stuff like that so we were like the mic dudes the the host the mcs um and then we started doing gigs and would pay charlie to be the dj is just you guys did the same <laughs> thing God! Not I, now. But I'm actually right? about to be my fan. Right? Like, exactly. Really my life story. Because <laughs> we didn't want to say no to the gigs, and we were like, "Why are we getting these gigs?" So exactly. we thought at least half is better than nothing, isn't it? So Charlie would come, he'd spin for an hour, then at, we'd be on the mic being, "Hey, it's Ricky and Melvin here from like Kiss or whatever," <laughs> and then at the end, we'd give him half of our money. Right? <laughs> this is exactly so what we did. <laughs> after about a year of, it was time we did it, and then we got a friend called um, Andrew Davis, who used to work at MySpace. He's like, he does consultancy now, like for online. He's really big in the game. And he was like, and he's a proper business guy. So he was like, Melvin, Ricky, you guys are doing really well. And I came to your gig the other day. He was like, what? he knew Charlie. He's like, why are you getting Charlie to DJ for you? And we were like, because we can't DJ. He goes, why don't you learn? <laughs> and, and we were like, because it, we don't know how to. He goes, just learn the basics. People are still, they're booking you because they like you. They like your energy. They like what you guys bring to the table. And they just want to party with you. So he was like, just learn the basics from Charlie. And then you can have all the money for yourself type thing. And we were like, okay, cool. So we've got secondhand decks. And like a mixer from this person, borrowed that from that person. And then we just kind of taught ourselves how to DJ. And that's how it happened. Oh my God. I love so that you were so... I love that you're so real with that because a lot of people um, don't like to talk about the actual struggle of getting to the point where you're really good. And you know what? You're not going to know it at the beginning. And a lot of people use mixers or get people to help and... And that's okay as long as you get to the point where you want to get to. And there's many different paths to that. So I love that you were really honest about that. But we did exactly the same. We did exactly really? the yeah. same. Yeah, yeah, I have to say, last night you went to one of the most fabulous parties in the world and you got to meet one of my absolute... Uh, like, you know, my girl crush. You got mm. to meet Christina Milian. Yeah. Did you or did you not thus today slide into her DM? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's happily taken. Okay, she great. She just had a baby as well. Awesome. Yeah, so that's not my style, but I'm just, I was a proper fanboy. Yeah. And um, I went up to her and I asked for a picture and she's like so lovely about it, shook her hand and just went off. But she literally looks the same, flawless. I mean, in all her, I haven't seen her in real, but she looks insane. Incredible, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so talking about DMs, <clears throat> yeah. Laura, any questions? Yes, of course. Um, what is the DM etiquette? And I know that you ask a lot of, <laughs> no, 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 because I've seen in a lot of your interviews, you yeah. ask a lot of different celebrities, yeah. do they slide into people's DMs and this and this and this. So you've collated a lot of DM etiquette yes. knowledge over the years, also, no? Also, just to say, she did slide into your I DM. I your and DM. Why you're here. Who slid into who? No, oh, I slid into yours. Slid into yours. Yeah, Is yeah, that yeah. how we started? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, uh, yeah, I asked you to come into the show. I was like, sorry to slide in your DMs. So, <laughs> and you were like, on camera, everyone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Laura slid into my DMs. Yep. This is true. Yeah, this is amazing. true. I did. But, we screenshot it. <laughs> all right, all right, guys. <laughs> in the DM Hall of Fame. No, but I wanted to know, is there a way to slide into DMs and is there a way not to? 
So I actually have like a step by step program. Okay, oh, this. and do, do tell. tell. So, <laughs> you said that exactly at the same time. Do tell. So first of all, you start with the the likes. So you kind of get the attention going. So you, you show interest okay. first. And then you kind of look at that person's stories and you pretend that you find them funny. Because if people, people, <laughs> like, to, this is great. people like to think that they've got a great sense of humour. So as long as you pretend that you're on the same wavelength, then you can be like, oh, that was hilarious what you posted the other day. And then they're like, okay, same sense of humour as me. And then you do what I call the slide and hide. Oh, no. So you oh, no. slide into the DMs. But not you don't put too many messages, just one little one. And then relax. Wait for them to reply to you. Sometimes I slide and hide for months. <laughs> that's called oh, ghosting, yeah. hun. That, that, that's no, but then when you get a response <coughs> a few weeks Sorry. afterwards or a few months afterwards, then... Because some people don't even see their messages. True. But you Are we talking what? about Rihanna level DM? I've never, I've never dated a celeb in my life. That, that's my aim in, in life. Oh, babe, but this will all change after this okay. interview. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, yeah. No, no. Well, he's got a whole dating show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's I'm, good. I'm learning about all this. But this what I really wanted just... to ask then off the back of that is what would be the celeb of choice? Who mm. would be your biggest celeb crush that you would like to date? Sofia Vergara. Okay. Okay. Yeah, from oh, really? Family. Just yeah. because. Um, oh, I can see how this DM. Oh, I can. Yeah, <laughs> she's got that yeah, Latin she, you've fire. Got that, yeah, you've well, got yeah. very... I can see how this <laughs> great yeah. sense of humor. Yeah. Her voice is like insane, like Cuban, like Colombian. Colombian, sorry. And she's just. I think she's just a ball of energy. Every every show she's I've seen her on, she's just full of positivity. Um, so yeah, Sofia Vergara is my. Did you watch the episode where she's like, everything has a cocktail dress? <laughs> yeah. Everything has a cocktail. You have a cocktail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything she says sounds so sexy. Yeah. And when she had to do the entry of like every time she walks into a dinner yeah. and she like pretends to be late to everything. Yeah. She's I awesome. She's wicked. Yeah. There's a really good sh good um, on YouTube just on the sideline of her and Ellen um, doing some, doing this mascara commercial. It's awesome. I'll okay. send it over to you later. It's so funny. I will add that to the list. Wicked. Yeah. Yeah. So Sofia Vergara, okay. So if is that a good choice? Oh, that's a very good that's choice. That's a very yeah. good choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah very, yeah. very, very good choice. I want to get a little bit into. We have a lot of listeners that um, maybe all kinds of ages. Do you think Melvin? And honestly, mm -hmm. is there a particular cut of time? Can you still make it when you're in your 30s and your 40s? Can you start over? Can you become a DJ? Can you become a radio host? Or is it done? I think there's no rules when it comes to DJing. I've, I've met DJs who are like super young and they're incredible. Then I've worked with DJs who like are more mature than, than I am. Like, okay, for example, do you guys know David Rodigan? Yeah. David Rodigan is an absolute legend in his game. When we started at Kiss, he was doing his show and literally just the other day he came into the studio and he came in and said, Ricky and Melvin, and I can't even do his accent. He's like, Ricky and Melvin, <laughs> Have you heard this new tune by Shy FX? And he's telling us about new tunes. And yeah. for me, it's all about your passion. It doesn't really matter about your age. I've been to festivals with Rodigan, and it was like, um, what was the last one was um, Snowbombing in Austria. And crowds of people are going crazy for him. And it's young people, you know, mm. like that absolutely love him. I think if you, if you care about what you're doing and you're good at it, that's all that matters. Yeah. That's very yeah. true. Well, would you tell someone starting out, would you tell someone that's like 16, 17 and they're, they're, they've made it through college and they just they just have that hunger. Can you, can you actually get on the radio? Yeah. I always say to people, don't wait for anyone else to employ you. Mm. Um, so I've, there's this really cool DJ that we know called Max Denim. And he is he's he's very big on like the West End club scene in Marbella and stuff mm. like that, Ibiza. Mm. And he just does these mad mashups on his Instagram and they get so much love on TikTok and social media and stuff like that. And that's what I mean. It's like building your audience behind the scenes so that it's radio stations and companies and clubs that come to you. Mm. When I think about comedians and there's certain comedians and presenters who have made a name for themselves online and now channels and production companies are coming to them. And I think it's the same if you're a DJ. Just keep smashing what you're doing on social media, in clubs, locally, around your friends. And if you're good, 
people will find out about it. That's my belief anyway. Which um, social media platform do you think is the most um, conducive to this at the moment? Would it be Instagram, TikTok? I, I think you have to do what works for you. I've seen people, there's a guy, I can't remember his name, he wears a mask and he does these insane mixes and he's on TikTok. Then there's another guy I've seen in, in America and he, he produces and he mixes as okay. well. And he's big on Instagram. Then I've seen people do stuff on um, Facebook. Like Spoon, in lockdown he used to do like these old school garage mixes like for hours so good and he's he's blew up on social media on facebook and he's doing it on instagram i just think whatever works for you yeah. you just have to you just have to do it put it out there a lot of people spend a lot of time talking about shit and not doing it i i i prefer doing stuff sometimes people go melvin what are you what are you planning to do next year i'm like you'll see that's really good. I don't yeah. like to talk about That's it. That's really good. In, this, yeah. in our industry, there's a lot of talkers, you know. Yeah. Like people are like, oh, you know what? I'm going to be doing this next year. I've got this plan. I've got that happening. Let's just do it. Like you girl, you girls just messaged me and were like, Melv, we're doing this podcast. I was like, rah. No, no, <laughs> Melv, we're doing a launch party. You, you inspired me because yeah. I was like, I did a podcast, yeah. but I didn't celebrate that podcast. Yeah. Why didn't I do what Lara and Laura did? We were just trying to get listeners. No, <laughs> no, we would also, we also wanted to honestly, we've been hustling for for years. This, we, did, we didn't just, you know, we started yeah. in lockdown and we actually thought we wanted a party. Yeah. We wanted a party. We wanted to bring all our DJ friends in and party and have fun and have a good time. That's a good idea. And that was really, uh, you know, a, a beyond everything. It was like, can't we just have a party and can't we just enjoy being together? Because yeah. who knows what will happen? Who knows what next? <laughs> and it's, it's that... a free advert because everyone that's at that party, mm. will go, some will go online and go, to your, one of your friends I met that night mm. and she was like, she's going to post up something. Mm. And so her friends will be like, well, where were you? Was yeah. that a launch party for Laura and Lara's podcast? Yeah, yeah, DJ yeah. yeah. So, and also I made it mandatory for entry for everyone to download. <laughs> she, she, she really did. I did. But she really did. But yeah. that's a good idea. you got to yeah. do what you got to do, man. You, got, you guys aren't talkers. You do stuff. Thank you. And I think you have to be in this industry. And I think a lot of people go, I'm a really good DJ, but this radio station hasn't asked me to DJ on their station. You don't have to wait for no one to yeah. ask you. Yeah. Just yeah. keep smashing at what you do and then they'll ask you. Yeah. I think in life, a lot of people think that things are given, but I mean, in my experience, it's never been like that. Never. So it's, you have to, you know, initiate and show people that there is value that you can bring to something and you know proof is in the pudding kind of thing yeah Lara and I are really big believers in humility do you believe in that do you think that's part of yeah, like don't be a dick type of thing I mean you know, you know I think the the only people who are get away with being dicks are the ones who are super talented yeah. and, but then they've got no friends <laughs> I think most people in this industry they're they're lovely it's yeah. I can count on one hand the amount of bad interviews I've had or the amount of bad situations I've had in the DJ booth or with club promoters and stuff if you're I think if you're mean in this industry you just won't survive because people want to work with people that they get on with mm. um, so on that what advice would you give to your younger self to my younger self. Yeah. yeah. What would you say? Honestly. Little Melvin, yeah. Stop buying cars and <laughs> save money on property. Yeah. Like, wow. I, I, was, I was not bothered by property as a kid. Like, I came out of uni and I was broke and mm. moved back into my mum's house. And my mum kept telling me to get a normal job. And I was just like, no, I want to be a presenter. And she's like, go and work in a bank. It's like, no, I want to be a presenter. And that's all. that was my main focus. Um... And then when I started getting work and being able to like pay bills, I'd started, I had this mad fetish for cars and then would just spend my money. And they weren't you even and amazing. You and every other boy. Me and every other boy, right? What kind of cars? <laughs> like Fiat's and MG's nice. and BMW's. Nice. No, nothing crazy. That's, yeah. And then once I started actually making crazy money, then I went bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. But like, if I had put that money aside and bought property, I'd be in a completely different place yeah. now and that wasn't my my ethos so mm. i think i just wanted to you wanted to floss them like that age when you're young and you're going to clubs and meeting new people you just want to floss you want to have the nicest clothing Absolutely. you want to have the nicest car I mean, and i wasn't really thinking yeah. about property but i would have put money aside for a, that is for really good advice i think you know financial awareness and stuff when you're 
at that age, it doesn't even, you think, oh, it's fine. It'll, it'll, it'll come, it'll come. Yeah. yeah. You want to get the yellow lamb bone, mm. just, you know, <laughs> yeah. rub, rub yeah. at the club. Because the thing is, if I did do that, I would be able to have a yellow lambo right now. Yeah. But I wasn't on that vibe. Yeah. It's okay. You will get that lambo. I feel oh, it. I'm I know. All right now. We're all right. Yeah. 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 No, no lambos, but we're all right. Yeah. Right. I know you don't like to talk, but I do want to ask what you have coming up at the moment. I know, obviously, you have radio every day, but you're a busy man. Yeah. Yeah. I see you doing lots of things. Um, can you tell us a little bit about anything we should be looking out for? So I just finished a show for E4 called Celeb Cooking School, which was uh, essentially a program for celebrities that can't cook. So we had this amazing guy called Giorgio Locatelli, who yeah. is a Michelin star chef. He's world renowned. He's like massive in Italy. He's got a restaurant in Mayfair, which you guys probably know, called um, Locanda Locanda Locatelli. Locatelli's. You know it. Yeah. So loads of stars have been there, like Mariah Carey's been there, Kanye West, they're best friends with like Kate Winslet. The, this guy's huge. And then we had... The, uh, another amazing chef called Poppy Cooks and they were putting our celebs through their paces and we had the final this week you can watch it back on for On Demand um, What was the worst dish that was <laughs> that was cooked? Steve-O um, who is Was like, he on there? Steve-O's on there Steve-O the Madman Oh I'm a big fan hilarious He's sober now isn't he? <laughs> yeah he's got, he's, got a, he's got a really good show he's got a really good podcast Steve-O I'm a is big fan. A, yeah. an amazing guy and yeah. he's huge on social media yeah. as well and he his dish was Rice Krispies what? marinated what? in milk so he makes Rice Krispies he he puts the milk in and then he leaves it to soak. So it's really is this his, is this that his was special his, thing? That was his dish. Was it good? No. Oh, it, it, was it doesn't sound good. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I would the munchies. Yeah, <laughs> it was terrible. But like, I would say the worst cook was Kim Woodburn. Ooh. who um, she's like famous for like doing like those um, house cleaning shows and stuff like that. Yeah. And she managed to somehow burn a tray, a plastic tray in her oven. No one knows how. And she literally had like But this... no, why is she putting a plastic tray in the oven? Okay, I know you're how... also talking to a master <laughs> chef. Lara no. is the best cook ever. But you don't have to be a master chef. You have to, to know... know that plastic's going to burn. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, would you put plastic in the I mean, oh, yeah, wow. she could have gone on the show. <laughs> you, next season? Would you come next season? Yeah. Sick. All right, cool. I, I would be t uh, terrible. I mean, I actually, Lara just pre pre prepared me this entire dinner for um, our New Year's. Are you a good cook? She's yeah, the I best. love cooking. She is I love cooking. She can throw a dinner party. I was just I was actually telling this my boyfriend the other day. She can throw a dinner party for 20 people like that. And she has done before and just cook for everyone. And it'll just be a one woman show. Yeah. 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 But I don't know, growing yeah. up, my family family was a cooking family and I think that like if you grow up with your yeah. everyone cooking around you it's natural mm -hmm. so I know some people that just wouldn't even know how things are cooked whether it's in the oven or in the frying pan because they didn't grow up around it so I don't know well, last question, or one of the last questions, you know, between reality TV and dancing on ice, which, uh, sorry, dance, dancing on ice, <laughs> yeah, strictly, come, right. stri yeah. strictly come dancing, and, and, uh, and you have a great quote there, which I'm going to just put up in my social media, but out of all those things, mm -hmm. I, I thrive on everything, okay, because we are all, we are all layered and we all do different things, and I know you do as well, and, mm -hmm. you know, cooking and dancing and having your own show and DJing and speaking and acting and producing and all that, does it all give you the same thrill still? Because it seems like you are still excited about what you do so much. Yeah, I think they, what's that saying? Um, variety is the spice of life. And I think that's why I like what I do because every day is completely different. And I get to do a bit of presenting one day, a bit of DJing another day, a bit of hosting another day. And I think that's what keeps it interesting for me. If I had to just do the same thing every single day, I'll get super bored. Like I'm doing some acting. You know, um, so Laura's partner, Ian Sterling, Ian? has a show called yep. Buffering. And so he asked me to do a random character in his show. And I've not done acting in, oh. since I did kids' TV. So it's nice for me to, it's to a step good show into as that. Well. It's a fun show. It's, yeah. Yeah. Ian's lovely to work with. Yeah. Um, so I'm ex I'm really excited about that. So it's yeah. stuff like that that I'm really excited. But you were a child actor and you were also... Yeah. And, yeah so it's, it kind of makes sense, right? And yeah, why to come back to it? But my sister's like, she's a proper actress. Like she trained in LA. And okay. She trained here in London as well. What's your sister's name? We'll Yona Rodum. Yona Rodum. That's your sister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is your yeah. star. Yeah, she's uh, she's very, very talented. How did I not know that? I don't know. We look exactly the same. I didn't she's, have this together. She's like me with, with hair, basically. I'm a really big fan of with your sister. Thank you very much. She's, I'll let her she, know. She'll be gassed when you I'm, say that. I'm a massive fan of your sister. Oh, for real? For real. Oh, I'll let her know. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. I, 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 I genuinely, <laughs> genuinely didn't know that. I but didn't she, she is... 
she's a real actress. Yeah. So I can I can never say yeah, she's like she's rather style. She's yeah. very very yeah, like yeah. she trains. Yeah. And she writes stuff and and so. I, I never feel like I'm a re the real. I'm just someone who can remember a few lines. And we talk about this a lot with imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. and I think that when you, in my eyes, are, have so many different facets, that you're probably far more talented than people who would consider themselves professionals in those sectors. Right. But because you're doing a bunch of different things, you don't feel like you're legitimate in one. It's maybe, yeah, maybe. I'm not too sure with me because I I've, I've always been like. Um, I don't do things unless I feel like I'm the best at it. It's really weird. I was, it, it comes from like school days. Like I always used to think, I'm going to do this talent show because I think I'm going to be the best singer. I think I, I would say wholeheartedly, I put my hand on my heart. I think when it comes to the dynamics of friends on the radio, there's no one better than me, Ricky and Charlie. You try and find me three friends that sound better than me, Ricky and Charlie on radio. Yeah. I don't think they exist. No. no. So I think we're the best at that. That is my, that's our US. Yeah. Um, P, unique yeah. selling yeah. point. And yeah. so, because I've got that in my head, when it comes to acting, like, bear in mind, we've interviewed people like Denzel Washington, okay, yeah, people right. like Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's half of And your ago, sister, sorry. Two, yeah. And yeah. my sister who's trained, yeah. like, she's, and she's, she's still yeah. struggling to kind of become like, into that realm of, of acting. So I find it hard to be like, I'm really good actor when okay. I've met incredible actors and, and real talent. I think you'll me. be amazing. I'm enjoying. And, it. I'm and, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm and Ian is awesome. It. So I think you'll. Well, we'll come it. and watch you guys. Yeah, we'll come and see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll put the pressure on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last <laughs> but not least, um, just like give us like a little sound bite of something mm -hmm. that that really like just like an, like one experience that you had DJing that kind of defined it, and it doesn't have to be something profound or just something that you just remember like the first thing you think about. There's there's been loads. We've obviously done like gigs in IB for and stuff like that. Weirdly enough, one of my favorite gigs was um, a wedding. It was for for someone who works in TV. I might not. I won't say their name in case they don't, they don't want to be mentioned. Mm -hmm. But it was on the coast of a beach. And I remember walking in and the sun was setting and everyone was just so lovely. And you know when every single tune just drops? Yes. And, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, like, yeah, I yeah. remember the groom, I remember the groom got so excited at one point, he took off his shirt and started swinging it no. around his head. And I did another one in France. I did another gig in France in this massive chateau. And it's there's something about I think weddings are the hardest things to DJ for because you're catering for so many people. And sometimes I say no to weddings because I think it's just too difficult to to make everyone happy. But if I if someone I literally I have to sit down and it's I study. Amazing. I'll be like, you need to send me this. I want to know what what genres you you hate, what genres you like. It's literally I'm like your wedding planner for your music. Pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. When, when it comes to the music, I don't yeah. play. So it's only there's I've only done a few weddings in my time, but the ones that we've done have been like monumental. And we've done like festivals and we've done like trips abroad like abroad. I did Portugal the other day. Like we've done those things, mm -hmm. but there is something about because I think it's very special. It to be asked to, to do something that's someone's special day they're not going to have that again they shouldn't have that again so to be asked to do that for someone and and you're going to you're always going to be a memory in, in their mind as well so I think if you can get that right and and it goes well for me, that's quite special. I so, it sounds cheesy, but... Do you no, know what? It does not. And I'm so beautiful that you say that. And, you know, I you love can... that you think about it in that way, though, because exactly. a lot of people think... Some of, DJs yeah, will, they will think... say no to, to yeah. weddings and stuff. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the way you've just put it, it, it kind of reframes how a wedding DJ should be looking at it. Well, I don't... I usually say no. Yeah. Not because I don't... Want, not because I think I'm too good for a wedding. Just because of, I think... It's too special a day. Yeah. So if I like, for example, my mate, I've, I know this doorman called John, like, mm -hmm. amazing guy, big up John, and he's getting married to this beautiful woman, and he messaged me the other day, says Melvin, can you DJ for me? And I was like, Jay, um, I have to say no just because I don't have time. I don't have time to go through music. I want to sit with you and your wife, and go through like, wh like what did you grow up listening to? When when I come in. I have to make sure you guys do not stop dancing. Mm -hmm. And so I, I had to say no just because I don't have the time to do it. But if I've got if I've got time and I love the couple and I think it'll be a good party and I think I can do a good job then I'll do it. But yeah, it's it's not that I'm I think I don't think I'm I don't think anyone's too good for anything. 
That's Wicked. A be- that's, that's a beautiful way to put it, and I, that's really something that I find it really moving. Thank you for sharing that with us, no, because pleasure. you know I, I'm sh- I know you've done the craziest of parties and all that, but that the the emotional, and and the, that that's really actually what life is all about, isn't it? Mm. Connection. So thank mm. you for that. It's that. And that we're going to have to wrap up. Yeah. I think that's all we have what? time. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thank yeah, you so thank much. You so it's, much. it's a huge deal for us yeah. that you no, came on the show. Thanks for having I, me. You know, I know how busy you are and I know how much you've got going on and no you know, you know what I've, I've been meaning to speak to you guys for a while and you two have a lot of love oh, and obviously you. you're close to some of my friends as well and yeah your energy is beautiful so thanks for having me on thank you, you. Thank you.